anti-lock brakes. Some folks swear by them and some people still think they're an impediment. In this video from the MC Garage, we'll explain how ABS works, how the current systems on the market differ, and what you can expect ABS to do for you. When a car's tires lock up, the car just skids. But when a motorcycle's front or rear wheel locks up, you might fall down. Thankfully, there's technology available to help you avoid unintentional slides and help you stop quickly and safely, even when the road is wet, dirty, or otherwise slippery. Here's how it works. On a non-ABS equipped bike, when you squeeze the brake lever, pressure is fed from the master cylinder directly down to the brake caliper. On a bike equipped with ABS, there are a few more components. Pressure goes from the master cylinder to an ABS pump and then down to the calipers. There's also an ABS computer, which is often piggybacked onto the pump, and that monitors brake pressure as well as front and rear wheel speed using stationary sensors on the fork and the swing arm, as well as slotted tone rings on the wheel hubs. When the ABS computer sees a discrepancy in front and rear wheel speed that it sees as a skid or an impending lockup, it will trigger solenoid valves in the ABS pump to reduce brake pressure and restore traction. ABS first appeared on motorcycles in the late 1980s, and up until about the mid-2000s, the systems were pretty crude with untimely coarse intervention. The systems were also quite heavy and expensive. Experiences with these early setups are why lots of riders today still think that ABS sucks. But like smartphones, lithium ion battery technology, and Snapchat filters, ah, ABS has come a long way in the last few years. These days, ABS intervention is far more refined and subtle, even on the fundamental systems you're gonna see on beginner bikes. But here's the really cool thing. ABS has evolved to a point where there are actually two tiers of technology. You've got your basic setup, which is similar to what I described earlier, and is all about safety. It's supposed to keep you safe during upright, straight line braking. And then you've got your performance systems. These are going to be a lot more advanced and they're often geared towards track riding or sport riding or even off-road riding. They're gonna be adjustable, usually, and they're going to use a lot more data streams so that it can have a more refined, precise ABS intervention that can not only help you ride safer, but help you ride faster. Ducati's cornering ABS is a great example of the latest technology. In addition to using wheel speed sensors and a brake pressure sensor, the ABS setup on this Scrambler 1100 uses data from an inertial measurement unit that knows how far over the motorcycle is leaning. Based on that data, the ABS computer might intervene earlier or more gently based on the motorcycle's lean angle to account for the fact that a bike has less stability and less traction while cornering. Getting data from an IMU and other channels also allows more advanced settings for the racetrack that will allow you to lift or drift the rear tire or even off-road ABS modes where you can fully lock the rear tire but maintain ABS functionality up front. Impressive stuff, right? It is, but you're probably wondering about a lot of things, so let's do a lightning round of questions, shall we? All right, here we go. First question. Are there aftermarket ABS kits? No, not that I'm aware of, and if they do exist, they're probably really expensive and really complicated. Can you get ABS on bikes with drum brakes? Unfortunately not. Drums are too crude, they're too mechanical, there's no way to integrate ABS technology. Do they have ABS in MotoGP? They do not, because Dorna doesn't allow it. Also, guys like Marc Marquez, they just save front end slides in their elbow. I don't know how they do it, the guy's a magician. Does ABS affect normal braking? That's a little bit of a tricky question and it depends on what normal braking is for you. Here's the thing, ABS isn't going to intervene unless the system sees a slide. However, some systems are so conservative that if you were to brake very hard in the front, hard enough that the bike pitches and maybe the rear tire comes off the ground a little bit, it's probably gonna intervene and reduce brake pressure even though you have plenty of traction at the front tire. So if that's how you brake on a regular basis, good for you, you're a badass but also you should probably invest in a more advanced performance system. Speaking of traction, does ABS give you more traction? It does not, but what it does do is allow you to exploit whatever traction is available to stop as quickly and safely as possible. Finally, does ABS make bikes uncrashable? No, no it does not, but modern day ABS, especially the more advanced systems like the cornering ABS you can get on this Ducati, are closer than ever before to keeping you from falling down. 
And of course, there's the really big question, which is who needs ABS? In my opinion, if you ride on the street, it's a must. It's true, a skilled rider may still be able to outbreak some of today's simpler ABS systems when conditions are perfect, but it's not about how hard you can brake when the road is dry and clean and you are ready for the challenge. It's about how quickly you can slow down or stop when it's raining, when the road is dirty, or when your tires are cold and some fool pulls out in front of you. Emergency braking is what ABS is all about, and I find it very reassuring to know that I can simply grab that front brake lever full force and let ABS manage my threshold braking while I take evasive maneuvers. That being said, I definitely prefer a system that you can turn off because Zach Quartz isn't the only guy that likes to back it into the office parking lot. Okay, so if this MC Garage video feels a little bit like a PSA, I apologize, but I feel like ABS has a bad rap. People think that it's only for beginners or safety fanatics. Not the case. ABS is an important safety feature and it has been proven to reduce accidents. And I for one am a big fan because despite what you've seen on onto wheels or some of my mini road racing videos, I don't actually enjoy crashing. I'm keen to hear what you think of ABS and what your experiences with the system have been like. So please leave your comments and stories below. As always, thank you for watching. Please subscribe, and until next time, ride safe.